Okay, chapter nine, we're talking about evaluating leader development here. So there are a number of things that we need to cover in this chapter, um, incorporating evaluative thinking into the design and discovery in evaluation and intervention design, designing the evaluation, implementing the evaluation, using the evaluation results. And then we have to look at things like evaluation as a way to learn about the practice of leadership. Now that's interesting, a way to learn about the practice of leadership and leadership development, and then linking evaluation to DAC, D, a direction, alignment, and commitment. Uh, so let me start with this passage from the text. Uh, we've been convinced that the ultimate purpose of evaluation is deepening knowledge that can lead to better informed decisions. Okay, everybody can buy that. We need to evaluate so that we understand what we're doing and why we're doing it. So there's this process where you have this evaluative thinking as part of the design of the program, whatever you're creating and, and developing. And then you do, there's discovery of aspects that will influence evaluation and design. Why are we doing this? Then you design and evaluate and communicate, uh, designing the evaluation and communicating plan. You implement the evaluation and then you evaluate. You use the evaluation results to then start the cycle over again to see what needs to be part of it and then it becomes a cyclical process. Okay? Uh, bringing evaluative thinking and rigor to the front end to the front end of the program, design during a needs assessment aligns the design with its intention, intended outcomes, resulting in designs that are more likely to accomplish their results. Now, so this is as opposed to what we very often do, we do whatever it is that we're doing and then we have some generic survey that doesn't really give you much. If you could start, start at the beginning and think through what is it that we really need to cover here and then design an instrument to be able to capture those results, you'll be much better off. Okay, so in this process, there are essential elements for evaluation. So the first step is to understand the context of the organization or community. There's that word context again. Identify the desired results or outcomes. Determine the leader competencies, uh, capabilities needed. So uh, again, this is like building capacity, what capabilities are needed, and then generate possible solutions. It's not likely that the organization level outcomes will be achieved through the use of a single three-day classroom-based leader development program that has no connection to organizational strategy. Now, hear that sentence again. It's not likely that organizational level outcomes, that is that the whole organization will be transformed by going to some single three-day classroom uh, training that has no connection to organizational strategy. So what you need if you want organizational level results is you need to involve the organization in a process that develops organizational level strategy. We have to be careful not to confuse the individual level, the group level, and the organizational level. Feedback intensive programs focus almost exclusively on each participant's personal strengths and development needs. That is, they target the individual. So usually when you have an FIP, it's dealing with building capacity in the individual. Now, will you get as an aggregate of individuals building in uh, some greater capacity? Yes, but it doesn't necessarily translate unless you are intentional about how it translates and how it deals with the organization's goals. Once we have identified what success looks like, we turn our focus to the specific leader competencies and capabilities that need to be developed. Now, when you're des designing the uh, evaluation, you identify the purpose of the evaluation, you identify specific evaluation questions, then you choose specific evaluation methods. For example, methods to measure individual outcomes or group outcomes or organizational outcomes. Okay, that's very important that you know which level you're on. <coughs> so when you're measuring individual outcomes, you have, for example, maybe daily evaluations where they're explaining, here's what I've learned today, or end of program evaluations, like you would see, say, in this course, uh, expectations, benefits, and comparisons, where we say, uh, how is this compared to what you thought you would get out of the program? Maybe you have interviews or open-ended questionnaires where we let you freeform explain what you what you uh, what you've learned. Learning surveys, taking action, uh, tracking action plans, and progress toward goals, which we'll actually use something modified like that in this course. Uh, customized change surveys. Uh, pre and post administration of 360 degree feedback. Now, this means that you have to have the pre um, feedback of the 360 degree, and then you compare it to what you learn on the other side, maybe some time after the program. Uh, behavioral observation, although that's a little trickier to get. Interviews of surveys with participants, coaches. Those are all ways of getting individual feedback. Now, warning, this is very important. The target of leader development, okay? Leader development is typically individuals 
only, rather than enhancing connections between individuals or groups. The benefit of leader and leadership development is in boosting the capacity of individuals, groups, teams, and organizations to effectively manage challenges. But it has to be, you have to know what you're targeting. Are you targeting individuals? Are you targeting groups? Are you targeting the organization? So when you're measuring group outcomes, for example, you might get everybody in the department uh, to engage in a focus group or a group dialogue. Maybe you have tracking action plans that progress toward particular goals. You observe team meetings. That's very different than taking an individual survey or interview team coaches. Um, and that same thing with organizational outcomes. It's a group activity. Maybe you're collecting a climate survey uh, at the beginning of the, of the uh, tr before the training, and then after, month, maybe a few months after the, the training to see if anything has, uh, has changed. Uh, same with the culture survey retest or assessment of organization systems change for a specific system within the organization, or if you're trying to figure out what the return on the investment is. Workplace statistics may be helpful. For example, um, you know, communication breakdowns and customer customer loyalty and customer satisfaction, employee turnover. You can measure employee turnover and see if it changed after, uh, after the training. I mean, again, if you're dealing with a whole unit, not individuals, uh, or customer satisfaction and see if there has been some kind of change. ROI is difficult when you're dealing with leadership development because, it, uh, again, you're not just dealing with the leader and the follower in isolation. There's the context. And trying to determine you know what is part of the context and what's part of the training is very difficult. ROI involves creating a formula relevant to the cost and benefits of the particular developmental experience, isolating its effects and determining the relevant ROI, which is very, very difficult. Um, now, as a reality check, we talk about challenges in evaluating leader and leadership development. So you have stakeholder influence and expectations. They want to know what it is or what's going to happen and how well they'll be prepared. Understanding the role of context, which is always there. Measurement challenges, what kind of metrics will you use, and then the program evaluation standards. Because leadership development, uh, I'm sorry, leader development is context sensitive, it is difficult to isolate those effects. Um, and so you're going to have a hard time with this. As leader development, in, uh, a leader development initiative will have a limited impact at the organizational level if the individual's organization or work environment is not supported of and in, uh, aligned with the desired changes. What that's saying is simple. If your boss is not on board with you or if, he, if he, he sends you off, go do this training, you need it, and then doesn't follow up and doesn't really incorporate it into the organization's mission and vision, it's not going to really have a lasting effect. Measurement, leader and leadership development initiatives take place in diverse contexts, which include leaders with differing abilities, making no two initiatives exactly alike. Even if the design is identical, even if they all address um, you know, assessment and support and, and they all have um, DAC involved, you're still going to have, you know, just like every class is a different class. Um, you've been in, uh, you don't experience it quite the same way as I as a professor do, but you know, I, I might have ta taught the same class seven different times and each class has this different personality that's just the way that it works so you'll get a very different experience each time evaluation as a way to learn about the practice of leader and leadership development now I, I want to focus on this as a way to learn because you know that's kind of what we're trying to get to is that we're creating this capacity and the ability to learn so that you're able to do this yourself organizations that engage in evaluation as part of a larger learning culture are more likely to attempt to discover what effects the leader development program is having, what can be improved, and how it contributes to the mission of the organization, right? So if you're all curious, trying to learn, trying to grow, it's a very different experience and go to this program and shut up about it, right? It's just, it's just different. It's a, it's a much more robust environment. Now, is culture critical? Absolutely. Strong cultures, there's a study, that I referenced the book All In in the previous lecture, <clears throat> Strong cultures that encourage leadership from everyone in the firm, and that's what we're talking about. That's what we've been talking about throughout this whole book. Over an 11-year period, John Cotter and Heskett, um, of, uh, Cotter's from Harvard University, uh, found that financial growth over an 11-year period is 682% in strong cultures as opposed to 166% in weak cultures. Stock appreciation, 901% over 11 years in strong cultures as opposed to 74% in weak cultures. Does this make a difference? Absolutely. So the conclusion is... You have to evaluate. Evaluation is difficult, it requires focus, but it has to be done. Thank you for your time and attention, and I'll talk to you in the next chapter.